Hey everybody, it's Mark, Dr. Ned Wax, back for part two of my response to uh, Mike Bostoni and Reggie's typography thread. Great idea, as I said before. So this time I'm going to kind of touch on jazz. And, and uh, it, typography, I think, has been very important in the uh, presentation of jazz records over the years. And here's a fairly, not it's not my earliest blue note, but it's a fairly early blue note, and as you can see here, kind of it's John Jenkins, Kenny Burrell, the players, a couple little pictures. Blue note, 1573, it's text. That's what it's about. And of course, you know, the essay on the back. And that's kind of the way jazz was marketed for years. And you can see at times, if, uh, like on blue notes, I'm going to show a bunch of blue notes here. If, uh, a photograph would come in, but in many ways, the, the text stands out more than the photo. You know, in a lot of popular music, the text is often almost recessed or hidden or very subtle in the image, but, you know, it's always, of course, the yes, essay on the back. And, you know, as we're moving along, this is you know, less than a year later, Shades of Red. It's all about the Typography, all about the text, all about it. And then we're back to the three sounds. And again, even though that's a pretty amazing image, that that white font in front of it just kind of makes it stand out. And moving along again, here's another one that's, you know, this is about the text again. There's no action shot. There's a, a portrait of Johnny Coles, but the rest of it's text. And then we're moving into a later period, more, uh, the picture becomes far more important in the artwork on Blue Note, um, into something Larry Young, it's kind of getting more modern, more, but we still have the essay on the back, same here with the Herbie Hancock, your players are listed, but they're much, it's much more subtle, and, and the, stories being told more with an image now than it is with just the text and um, there's Basra, Pete Baraka, and uh, again, it's still important, but, but you know, kind of you go back to a live date and it seems like the text kind of takes over again because there isn't a a, a conceptual image put together for the packaging. So the, you know, Night of the Cookers 1 and 2, the Freddie Hubbard date, uh, Lee Morgan, James Spaulding, etc., Pete LaRocca, Big Black. All of a sudden, we're kind of back to this heavy text-based, and you know, we still got our essays on the back. And then, I wish I could find a couple more of my Jackie McLean's, but Jackie McLean really kind of, kind of shows, um, a shift in, again, to kind of simpler backgrounds. There might still be an image, but the text gets really bold. And here it's action, action, action. And then there's another one, uh, Destination Out. I wish I could have found that. But now we're starting to turn the text and it's starting to move. You know, up until this point, everything's been a straight line. Everything's been laid out. But I think Destination Out, you know, the outs shooting off on an angle. And next would come uh, Stanley Tarantine's Rough and Tumble. And, uh, and players are still important. And then um, this, the latest one I have is uh, Bobby Humphrey's Blacks and Blues. And, and it's kind of changed, you know. So we've, we've still had, you know, up until the, that one we've had the essay. But this one, the format and the structure of the, the essay and everything on the back's kind of changed. And on the front, um, the text over here has is contouring with the uh, photograph of Bobby, and uh, you know, so it's kind of again, it, it's it's got that motion to it that it hasn't had in the other ones. So that's a, I know that's a lot of blue notes, but it it's amazing how in jazz text is and typography is has kind of been what it's about for so long and and and, and it still continues on it to this day 
And it's not just Blue Note. I mean, here's Brother Jack at the Jazz Workshop Live, the Brother Jack McDuff Quartet. You know, this is how jazz was marketed for years, was text with an essay on the back. And you know, it's not just uh, Prestige and Blue Note. It's, here's Ole Coltrane and uh, Ornette, both on Atlantic. And they have their own style and sensibility. And then if we move into, um, you move into the 70s, we saw that the Bobby Humphreys was kind of uh, moving away from that more traditional look and layout. Then you get to ECM, one of my favorite labels. And here's uh, an early one. This is in the 30s. Uh, Keith Jarrett's in the light. You know, it's a sand dune maybe, or and maybe shadows. Pretty simple. Uh, next is one of the plainest of them all, Ralph Towner, you know, Solstice, Sound and Shadows. Uh, next, this is the 100th recording of ECM, Sun Bear Concerts. Uh, this is the excerpts, uh, kind of promotional one, but I have the, the 10 LP, but I didn't want to get, like, I didn't want to have to hold that up. But, so this is just plain uh, rice paper you know, like a handmade rice paper look to the cover and then just text on top of it. Uh, chronologically next is uh, uh, David Darling, Journal October, some solo cello work. So this is that kind of, uh, I can't remember what it was called, but you would do it in school. You'd put crayon down and then you'd, you'd, you'd uh, put a field of color down and then you'd scratch into it um, in writing. So. Pretty simple. Um, another plain one, uh, kind of evoking a lot of the simple block color field uh, paintings of the modern painters: uh, Afton Land, Jan Garber, uh, Cal Jensen, Johnson. Um, you know, just plain, very simple. And finally, yeah, like kind of homaging back to say some of the early blue notes. And the early jazz records, but you know, kind of taking it out to more. There was a whole period of time on ECM where th this kind of thing was going on again, with just the title and the players, and 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 a, and a lot of the early Blue Note stuff, as I've shown, was kind of like that. And here we are, like, oh, this is 1982, so we're 25 years down the road, and um, we're doing the same thing in many ways, except we've made it simpler and starker. And, you know, and trio improvisation, improvisations, and the music of Monk. So, anyway, that's eight minutes of that, so that's enough. Uh, so, in the in the jazz, I think the typography is more uh, standard and more just the way it was done. I find it in, in a lot of the rock stuff, there's a lot more adventure. Uh, it's a lot more adventurous, and a lot of times it's subtler. And, but uh, with the rock stuff, I could have done a lot more bands that have iconic type typographical logos. Like the Yes has, you know, that's very specific, or that Teenage Head, where I showed the three of them that were very specific. But I, I wanted to keep it about the typography because. Most everything else that I could find had, uh, you know, also had really powerful images uh, uh, in addition to the typography. And I don't know. It seemed like the theme was to keep it a little bit more about the text and less about the image. So, anyway, Mike, again, uh, great idea. Kind of fun to do with Red, harkening back to the early days in many ways. I've seen Fred's response, which was great. I've seen uh, Ted's response, uh, which was great. And your first one, and I'm ho I'm hoping a lot of a lot more people kind of jump in and do this. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Have a great day, everybody. Keep the work spinning.